Hello and welcome to another Street Fighter V match review. And today we have President Carter on jury and he will fight against Mika. The player of Mika is... One moment, we're gonna see it quite soon and it will be Concept 33. So this is the first review of Season 2 and we have jury which got some buffs. And remember that moment because we're gonna get back to it in a quite different form, but the same concept. And President Carter, in his message, says that most of his problems might be reckless offense and going into autopilot. And while the offense might not be it, at least not at this moment, there is some issue with autopilot in his game, and we're gonna see exactly where it is. It is somewhere we are not used to be to think about as an autopilot spot but here we are and we got hit exactly by that so in this moment why did we get hit by this down first punch well if we saw it even once again you're gonna see that we think that mika is far away enough now but and we will try to stick out and move there but she has some other plan and she will press the button, she will activate the V trigger and she will take the round. Now, don't get me wrong, throwing up moves is a good thing, or at least is a decent thing. It's something we need to do sometimes. But, and it's a big bat, <laughs> we have to think about it. We have to do it when we predict something relevant uh, which we, it will hit and because if not it is susceptible to the same thing we saw Mika does again it will be the standing ground house or it will be a jumping from other characters or maybe a fireball and once again we got hit by the exact same thing which we a bit failed the combo from the Mika player but he will uh, make up for it with a random standing ground house so we think to ourselves, why he's doing that? What he's trying to beat with his throwing out move? And here we see a great example. A dash in. Alright, so we know that sticking out a move will beat a dash in. But what it will lose to? Well, it's gonna lose to down fierce as we saw. And who? What we saw here? He actually waited. And by waiting, he was able to react to the charging and counter it a bit messing up the combo which is uh, fine and again we waited and we thought she will do the round those but we didn't really really reacted to it we just waited a bit and did the standing round house and we got hit by the down fierce punch so let's break down the situation we're gonna block to slow uh, low kick and then we're gonna be this far from the opponents. So let's think about what is her options now. What is Mika's options now? She can go for, as we saw quite a lot, uh, standing roundhouse and charge it. It will counter some stuff. She can go for crouch, uh, fist punch, which will counter some stuff. And she can obviously, as we saw, dash. I hope you see the green over the the tree here and the lovely holidays uh, arena here and yeah i think we will go with that so what can jury do to counter it um she can stick out the move sticking out the move will uh beat dashing which is good uh, let's call it a uh, move or press let's use p for pressing buttons she can also jump. What jump will do here? Jump will obviously beat both attacks. The standing fierce punch and the standing roundhouse. But what it will lose to? Well, Mika could dash in and react to jumping and with her aunt here, which will be down medium punch. While throwing a move will... Um, do we want to use another color? Hmm, I wonder. Let's try it. Let's see if we don't get the screen too messy with that. 
So the P, which we which is we remember is pressing buttons, buttons will be the uh, blue. She has another option, which is to wait and react. So we'll use another color. I think yellow will be nice. So we'll use it as W. If it looks too much as homeschool, well, yeah. So what's waiting will win? Waiting will probably beat a fierce punch because fierce punch, even in season two, even more, is minus on block. So at any range, even at the closest range, it will be minus on block, which will be frame disadvantage. We can start our friends and what's not. It might beat dash and it might beat standing roundhouse, but here we'll need to react. So we'd use another color of of yellow for add because this is quite close, but and we will call it R for reaction. So if we trust our reaction, we can actually cover all the options. It is harder because if we try to add more stuff to the equation of what Mika might do, which might be uh, jumping, she can V trigger. Yes, yeah, she's far enough. She can V trigger and she can, I don't know, probably she can do stuff. But let's, let's forget about it for now. So she can do a lot of stuff. And, but if we, we, we focus her on only doing one of these three stuff, so we need to wait for down first punch and we can try and react to the, where is the color? All right, here's the color, react to the dash with a small fast button and react to the standing roundhouse with our own standing roundhouse, which is not easy. So if, and, and if we fail, let's remember it, that failing at the reaction is scary because if we didn't react good to standing roundhouse, we got fatal counter to a big combo. And if we didn't react to the dash, we might get countered again because we press too late or we got hit by something. Um, waiting is safe against down fear sponge, so this is fine. So, if we want to play it safe, or at least not, not, uh, not uh, rely on our reaction, we we might want to jump if we pin her, if we pin Mika on doing something. But don't take it as a. Uh, uh, a suggestion to jump in this situation. No, this is not the the advice I try to give you. But I need you to think. We have this range. We have this situation here. We need another color. We'll use black. We know that this distance. We cannot go on autopilot for that distance. We have to think about all these options and over the match we have to uh, consider everything and think all right this Mika she loves to do uh, crouch fierce and she likes to do standing roundhouse but she didn't really do a lot of dashes so we maybe don't don't need to pin her on that no we need to use another color because she doesn't do that so we'll Oh God, oh God, I deleted it. Wow, this is harder than it looks, guys. So she doesn't do that. So we can try to pin her on that and try to counter that by jumping. And every time we need to have a prediction of what our opponents will do and to punish that. So let's throw it all away and come back to talk about it a bit more. So this is again regarding the autopilot. We already encountered autopilot behaviors in different points in previous uh, videos, which was on offense when we did the jumping and we were fixed on what we're gonna do without reacting to our opponents or 
basically even reacting to our own if we got hit or not. And in previous video for the Mika player, which uh, was a different Mika player, of course, this is not concept 33 with K. What a weird name. All right, and never mind. Which was he was autopiloting his defense. He was not used to go on full offense, full crazy Mika shenanigans on offense. And on defense, I mean, when he blocked something that put him at frame advantage. Oh, this was a nice Spanish. Great job. Great job, President Carter. And again, here we see another issue of autopilot. At another point, we are not used to be... We um, how, how would I say it? We are not used to be in... Or, or no, we are not used to think about it as a point for autopilot because we got a bit far away and we tend to phase out at this point. We want to throw a move, give ourselves some time to reconsider, collect our thoughts, and no, we are not out of the water yet. We cannot do that. And a lot of damage that our jury player. President Carter got hit by in this match was exactly because he was throwing out moves at this range. And even if he didn't got hit by it because of that, but he most of the time did got hit, but even at times he didn't got hit by that, he got put in frame disadvantage because he whiffed move. It made him blocked charge standing ground outs. If Mika would have jumped in instead, he would have needed to block that. So we really can't relax and we need to stay focused at every point of the match. So this time we're going to look at Sako and how he used Jury against Mika. Uh, this is I took from Kuroza channel. I will link for it in the description. This is obviously quite old match five months ago from season one but what we see is timeless and we're gonna just focus he's gonna do a lot of stuff with jury as usual but we're gonna focus how